Welcome back to another episode of TVGP's We Rogue Like It. I'm your host, Boston, and joining me as always is Moonpeer. Hello. We're here to wrap out, uh, yes, and the Bonnie of Isaac, uh, if you're watching the video version. Uh, we're here to talk about the uh, the very last week of the Swords of Ditto. This mm-hmm. is our fourth out of four weeks. And um, I didn't play a ton because I couldn't... Apparently, I, I ran into some mental block where every time I started a new run i just pooched it nearly immediately <laughs> so I, I i did another couple runs and just said well okay apparently i just will beat this once and that's as far as i get uh yeah to be honest that's probably where i'm going to be stopping uh because i did beat it this week hey um i streamed it on wednesday question mark <laughs> earlier this and, week yes and i beat it this week i had a really solid run and then I got the curse on me about the whole five days, and I was like, wait, did it ever do the five days? Like, I don't know if it told me about the five days the first time. Yeah. But it definitely did the second time. But I yeah, think... we had some confusion early on, because I could have sworn the game told me 24 hours, and mm-hmm. for you, it seemed like 72, and now the game said, eh, it's about five days. It's like, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> uh, so the thing I uh, discovered... I think it did it deliberately because mm. I'm pretty sure I still have plenty of time left on my on my first defeat of the boss run, mm-hmm. um, and then I hit the same level as the boss. Okay. And then it was immediately like today's the last day. Oh, interesting. Okay. You have 24 hours to take care of what you need to take care of, and then you need to go face the boss. Like, interesting. So okay. I'm curious if that's designed to stop you from over-leveling and being stronger than the boss allows you to. Right. That'd be smart. Yeah. Um, slightly annoying because I was making real solid progress and I just unlocked two of those elemental root things mm, on my right. current run. I was like, yeah, I can go back and get all these things. And like, no, now you 24 hours. Do what you need to do. It's time to go. <laughs> right. So I was like, great. It actually comes up with the timer at the top of the screen as well. That tells you how oh, long nice. you've got, which is kind of cool. But yeah, I went in, and honestly, she was a cakewalk. Oh, really? Like, a genuine cakewalk. The the tower to get to her, I almost died twice because stupid people. It's but, tough. Yeah, but her herself, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know if it was the fire damage. I don't know if it, if it was just the fact that I was so overleveled and max badge character, but she was gone like that. Nice. Um, and then I got the stupid thing, the, the mark. Thing. Yes. Yep. That tells me to go and deliver it to this place, which I, I went to. I couldn't do nothing with it. So yeah, I had to Google rules, it. I Googled it. You gotta yeah. do it at night time. Yeah, and I was just like, well, how was I supposed to know? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> yep. That's exactly where I stood. Um, um, started running around the world again. I didn't go to any of those skull things after what you said about it. Yeah. I was like, no, I'm not going to touch them. Yeah. I'm going to avoid them like the plague. And then I stopped playing it, and I'm kind of done with this game right now. Yeah. And not that it's bad, I'm just ready to move on. Yeah, I mean, it's something which I think we mentioned probably in its first week. I have recommended The Story Goes On as a very good beginner roguelike. Yeah. I think this is the next logical step after that point. I think sure, The Story yeah. Goes On is a good intro i think swords of ditto is a great step too it's a Mm -hmm. it's a great next step before you go down the rabbit hole of isaac and everything else (laughs) well and i think uh ditto might be a good potentially a good bridge game like if you really like action games or you really love zelda and you're interested in stuff like gungeon or isaac this might be the good between because it has the roguelike elements but it plays very much like a 16-bit zelda so you can sort of you're comfortable with the action part and you're going to get used to some of the roguelike elements yeah and it's also not insanely paced it's yeah i think it's both a negative and a positive for us both it's probably a bit negative yeah for most people the fact that it's a, a slow and deliberate game like not as slow as some of the seas. <laughs> right. It's not as slow as some other games that we've played. Right. But the fact that it's paced so nicely, it's not trying to punish you with how fast the game moves. It's not trying to be like, oh, you don't have Twitch reflexes. 
then yeah. you're gonna die because yeah. there are times when isaac can do that to you it's like oh there's a guy literally an inch in front of you the second you go, go into a room <laughs> you spawn in this room there's five bosses ha 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 <laughs> exactly whereas yeah. i feel like this is a bit more forgiving on that front and yeah give it a go if you're interested in roguelikes and you're not sure this is a very very good step too yeah i i think you mentioning it being a slower game is probably one of my frustrations with it i guess i wasn't disappointed it's not it it's it's not a, a knock against the game it's one of those things where it just I, I don't want it to move as fast as something like doom does where you're running at 200 miles an hour i just want just like 10 percent faster just a little bit like a little bit of up and at them you know like a, a yeah. little bit of a little bit of I mean, speed there it's like they've got the they've got the things that increase your rolling speed yeah well it's like give me some stickers that increase movement speed keep the yes. attack speed the same i don't care that feels good yeah just give me a better movement speed but then you think if you move faster then you can dodge out of sword attacks easier that you know sure it kind of messes with the balance yeah but at the same time that's kind of the point of roguelikes is to take it <laughs> right. bend it and then snap it in half as you destroy the game completely. Yeah. Oh, I think overall I liked Swords of Ditto. I think mm -hmm. if I think for someone that doesn't like roguelikes and doesn't like roguelike elements, this isn't the game to win them over. You know, I yeah. I, I think there's enough the runs are long enough that I feel like this isn't something I would recommend to them, but I think your recommendation stands. And I think overall, it's a solid game. It's certainly not the best roguelike or best game I've ever played, but it's I have, I've played many things that are way, way worse than this. And I, it's, it's a solid game that works really well, and it has just enough mechanics to be fun without, you know, I always want a game with more mechanics. You know, I will always punish myself with Darkest Dungeon. But yes, it's you. I well, we yeah. have met you before. If you're yeah. this deep into We Rogue like it, you <laughs> yeah. know that We've Boston met. likes mechanics. <laughs> yeah, but I think uh, Swords of Ditto has just enough stuff in it to kind of make it interesting from run to run without mm -hmm. it having 300 things in a 10-hour tutorial. Um, yeah. I think at the end of the day, Swords of Ditto is fun. I'm I'm glad we played it. I glad glad we got a chance to play it. Um, and it's it's probably not my favorite roguelike of all time. The scientists uh, will weigh in during our uh, ranking episode coming out at the same time as this does. Um, but you know it's it's a solid game. It's good. Yeah, it's it's a a very fundamentally fine mm -hmm. roguelike game with nothing that escalates it to that next level kind of like thing. Like nothing outstanding. Yeah. I mean, you look at Dead Cells and it's like, it's a Castlevania game where the controls are perfect. Right. I'd say the, the thing only thing excels it. for me, for Ditto, that excels it is probably the art style. Um, yes. I, it's I a think very that is, good art style. Yeah. I think it's, it's one of those games that manages to do, I hate saying this, but manages to do a cartoony <laughs> style, which I, most people use as like a, uh, it's a, a negative to most people, yeah. Yeah, but I think it does. It helps this game feel really good when it's blue sky and when the world is destroyed. You, it really fits both ways, and it's it's pretty incredible. Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, for anybody watching the video feed, by the way, I have something in my eye, so I can't open my eye anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put the uh, audio only <laughs> picture back up. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Yeah. Uh, but that's uh, so that's we uh, roguelike it for Swords of Ditto. Let's talk about our next game chosen out of our <laughs> rapidly growing list of games uh, that we have on here. It's well over 100 again. Um, yep. Chosen by random.org. I slap that list on in there and hit random, and I come with the first one. Shockingly, which is Prey Moon Crash. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, a game Moon and I, before it came out, we were like, yeah, Prey Roguelike, yeah. Like, we're, you know, put, kicking down the doors of Arcane, saying, like, put it in me. Uh, yeah. And then it came out, and we said, mm, it's a thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we played it. we played it a little bit, but then we kind of both bounced. Yeah. So... 
I mean, it's going to be interesting to go back. Yeah, it's been months since I played Moon Crash, and I'm curious to see if I enjoy it again. I'll probably start a new save um, mm-hmm. just to check out you know, the beginning and then some of the end stuff. Um, our estimate for this is probably going to be about two weeks. Uh, yeah. This isn't... This isn't the most complicated roguelike, and um, we've already played it a lot, so either we're going to be super into it for these two weeks, or counting the weeks down. I'm not entirely sure. Um, But Prey Moon Crash, out on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Um, It is, uh, if you already own Prey, it's just a downloadable. If you don't own Prey, it comes with the digital deluxe edition. You'll get Prey and Moon Crash. Mm -hmm. Uh, And if you don't own Prey, why do you not? Yeah, go play Prey and then play Moon Crash. You, if you haven't played Prey before, Moon Crash is probably not the best place to start because it really throws you into the deep end. Um, at least do a <clears throat> like a run of Prey on easy just to get the the mechanics of the game down. Yeah, um, yeah. So Prey Moon Crash, uh, that'll be our game starting next week, and we'll see you all next week. Bye.